Gracias. Yo, yo me voy a presentar en español eh, y luego se presenta mi colega y comenzamos la presentación en inglés. ¿okay? Soy Diego Domínguez, trabajo en Meta hace cinco años como Network Delivery Manager y soy responsable por la ejecución de nuestros planes de capacidad de CDN, computing y cachés en la región de Latinoamérica. Hi, I'm, from, I'm Jenny Ramsire. I'm from Boston. I work for Meta. Um, I work on the team that's been doing a lot of the tooling for all of our networking today. So we're going to tell you a little bit about what we've done. All right, thank you. So let's see. Yeah, there we go. So this is what we're going to be talking about. It's just how we handle peering um, configuration requests from internet service providers that want to have peering with Meta how we used to do it and how we do it uh, since last year. What we were showing before is that uh, our infrastructure for peering uh, supports all of the services and apps that our company runs. And when we set up peering with someone, we exchange traffic for every single app that we support. And that used to require a lot of manual work for our teams. We receive around 500 emails monthly uh, to our peering at fb.com account. But about 100 of them were actual peering requests. We are connected to a large number of internet exchange points that you can see, and we have a very large number of bilateral uh, peering sessions through IXs. So that represented a lot of manual work for us. It was looking at emails, answering them manually, using templates to answer those questions or sending notifications about configuration. And it wasn't quite optimal for the scale that we're operating at. Uh, this is a timeline history of the amount of emails we were receiving uh, on the X axis is the month. Uh, even though you cannot see it, that little dip over there is what happened after we changed how we uh, process email request, uh, peering requests over email. Uh, what we really wanted to do is to make it easier for us to manage the large amount of requests that we were receiving and, and the emails that were coming in. We thought it was not quite the best solution for us. And we wanted to make it easier for everyone at Meta and also for every one of our partners or internet service providers that want to peer with us. And what did we do? Thanks, Diego. Um, Sorry. So we automated it. We made it so that the handling of the peering at mailbox could be done completely automatically. So let's take a look at how we did it. So first off, we had to make a page where peers could come to request peering with us um, without sending us an email. So this is the page on facebook.com slash peering. If you see at the top, um, we've got the facts about Meta, we've got our peering policy. And then if you look at the upper right over there, you can see that you don't have to be logged into Facebook to get to the page. So we've heard in the past that using your personal Facebook account to do business with Meta was not a great experience. So we wanted to make sure that you could get to the page without being logged in. Okay, so if you look at the bottom, um, it's a little blurry, but you can see that there's a button at the bottom which says um, sign in with peering DB. So if you, ah, oh, there's a bigger one. If you see it, if you click it, you'll be redirected to PeeringDB. So we were on facebook.com, now we're on peeringdb.com and we're using what's called PeeringDB OAuth. It's a service where you can sign in with your PeeringDB account and we'll trust the results that we get from PeeringDB to say that you are who you say you are. So instead of using a Facebook account, you can now use a PeeringDB account. Anyway, if you sign in, you'll be redirected to another page again on HearingDB, where basically you authorize Meta to collect a little information about yourself. This is your, your name, your email address, so we can communicate with you about your request, and then the list of networks that you're allowed to request peering for. So once we have that, if you click authorize, you'll be sent back to facebook.com slash peering, where you can see the logged in view with the public peering request options. So if you click on the request public peering button now, you'll see the following widget here. If you look at the top, 
there's your ASN. If you have multiple ASNs in Peering DB, you'll be able to select one from the list. Um, there's also an email contact. This is defaults to whatever you have in Peering DB, but of course you can change it if there's another address you would prefer to use. And then down below, you'll see all of the public peering sessions that you have with Meta and that you could have with Meta. So if you look at the top here, you can see we've got the, the IX IDs, got the sites, um, you've got the traffic, and then you've got the status of the session. So all of these are not configured. Um, if they were configured, you'd be able to see the traffic levels and other facts about them. So let's say you want to request peering. What do you do? Well, you can select on the side which exchanges at which you'd like to peer. By default, we'll set up peering everywhere. But if you only want to peer at one location, you just change the checkbox. And after that, you click start, start public peering down in the corner, and then your request will land in our queue. I'll talk about the queue a little later, but suffice to say, all you have to do is fill out the form. Here's a close up view. These again are all not configured, but if you had sessions with us, you could also come to this page to see what's the status of my BGP sessions. Are we exchanging the traffic I expect? That information will all be here as well. All right, so this is for public peering, um, again, where you meet at a router, but let's say you wanted to do private peering, a direct connection with us. Well, come on. Okay. <laughs> um, well, we've got a form on facebook.com slash peering for that as well. If you qualify, you'll be able to see the request private peering page. It's fairly similar to the public peering. You can see you've still got your ASN, you've still got your email, but instead of seeing all of the IXs where you could peer, you'll see all of the facilities in a dropdown. And you can select a facility from the dropdown. You'll see any existing lags you have with us. And then at the bottom, you'll see an option to add more capacity. So you just pick how many lags, the number of circuits, and the speed, click the create new lag. And again, that'll land in our queue. We've got the same thing for augment, which, you know, instead of adding a new one at the bottom, you just select the lag that you would like to augment or add capacity to. And you'll be able to do that down below, and it will land in the queue. So, you know, the whole point of this project was to make sure that um, the peering on call no longer had to observe the peering mailbox as closely as before. So what do we do if you write to peering at facebook.com? Well, we've set up a service which takes everything in that inbox, categorizes it automatically based on the content into peering request, caching request, various other categories. And then for everything to site deemed a peering request, we reply back automatically with the following message here, you know, thank you for your interest in peering. Please send us any peering requests on our dedicated page at facebook.com slash peering. So it redirects you back to the page we've set up, which saves us some time because we no longer have to carefully reply to every email. And hopefully it also saves you some time because you no longer have to wait for us uh, to set up these things. You can just request it yourself. So a little more about what actually happens to your request after you've submitted it. So as you can see at the top, there are a couple of different ways to get to the peering form on facebook.com slash peering. You can write to peering db, or sorry, peering at fd.com and be redirected. You can go straight to the page and do the peering db OAuth. Or if you have network partner portal with us, you can also do it there. Regardless, once you submit the peering form, your request will land in our queue. This is just an internal um, list of all of the requests that we've gotten. We set it up to make sure that our automation is doing what we expect. You know, we're not deleting sessions or misconfiguring things. And so once something lands in the queue, we'll offer with another automated service we made an approval suggestion, which is sort of a, what do you think we ought to do with this request? Should we approve it? Should we reject it? Should we flag it for human review? And then based on that suggestion and our confidence in it, it will either be automatically processed or it will be flagged for a review by a human. Then if approved, we'll run our automated um, peering configuration, which just sets up the sessions for us and communicates with the peers. And you'll get some automated communication. You know, if you've peered with us before, we send you some emails saying, hey, we've configured the sessions. Hey, please configure your side. Hey, we see that the following sessions have come up. You know, that's all done automatically. So 
throughout all of this, um, we've removed a lot of work for our peering on call, which lets them do other more interesting, more impactful work. And hopefully we've saved a lot of time for you as well, because you don't have to, you can do it on demand. So I've talked a lot about how, how much time and how great the system has been, but let's see some actual stats, right? So the impact since April of last year, when we started this, we've gotten 6,400 emails. From those, we've ended up with 2,400 automated requests to our system on facebook.com slash peering. From those, we've approved 2,200 of them, which has resulted in over 22,000 sessions being automatically configured. So that's an enormous amount of time we've saved for the on-call, hopefully for you as well, since you no longer have to wait for us to do these manually. Um, and it's been letting our on-call do lots of more impactful, more in interesting work. So it's been working really great for us so far. So there were a couple of considerations we had while setting up this. First off, like I said before, we wanted to make sure that there was a queue. Um, we didn't want to just configure sessions willy-nilly without a human looking at them. So to start off with, every request was reviewed by a human. Gradually, we're moving to more automated approvals. This would be the case, let's say, where you come to us and you're re requesting sessions at an exchange where you already have some. That could probably be auto-approved. Or for example, you have route server traffic and you're requesting for sessions. Maybe that could be auto-approved. There are a couple of different cases, right? Second off, we're relying on PeeringDB for the authentication. This is again, so you don't have to use your Facebook account, um, but is this okay? Um, in the end, we decided, you know, we already rely on PeeringDB data for all of the tools that we use for our session automation. So adding an extra reliance was fine. And then finally, um, we've heard in the past, you know, using your personal Facebook for business is not a great experience. So we wanted to be certain that you could get to the page without using your personal Facebook account. There were a couple of components required. I wanted to just go over them in case you also would like to set up something like this. The different things that we need and you would need. Um, first off, you'll need a tool to generate the config files per peer. Then you'll need some automation to push those config files onto the routers. To make sure everything worked, you'll need a system that'll monitor the status of the BGP sessions. And then you'll also need some kind of workflow engine to coordinate all of the different steps of setting up peering. That's the back end side on the front end. You'll also need some kind of landing page, maybe like facebook.com slash peering, um, where you, your peers can come to request the BGP sessions with you. So you should try this out too, if you find yourself facing the similar um, peering request scaling problems that we've had. You know, the advantages are you and your peers can see all of their BGP sessions in one place. Um, it's easy to configure new BGP sessions. Hopefully everybody already has a peering DB account and setting up the peering DB OAuth was actually quite easy. It took us about a day. There are great instructions on the peering DB website. Um, it was pretty simple. Other people are also using the peering DB OAuth now, like IXP manager and peering manager. So it seems to be working quite well. And finally, you know, automation saves time. It saves us time, but it also saves you time since everything is self-service now. Um, on that note, we'd love to see a couple of these things become the industry standard. Is it coming? Ah, first off, we'd love to see peering DB OAuth um, login be the standard for networking requests, you know? Um, everybody in the community for the most part has a peering DB. So rather than having to remember, you know, a hundred different passwords for your hundred different partners, if everybody just used this one, it would be easy for everyone, we think in the community. Second off, um, we'd love to see more of these stuff that we've made and similar end up as open source tools. You know, a lot exists today, peering manager, peering DB OAuth is open source. There's a set of peering DB tools, um, improvements to those benefit the whole community. So it'd be great to see those. And then finally, we've been working with a couple other companies on establishing a programmatic API for peering. So right now, right, a human still has to come to our page or to another page um, to request peering. 
what if instead for larger scale requests, we could just let two computers talk to each other directly um, and have them through an API, request peering, configure peering, exchange messages about peering, that kind of thing. So we're working on this right now. Um, if you're interested in this kind of thing, please come talk to me afterwards. I'd love to chat with you about it. Um, we're looking for any and all interested parties. So over to you, Diego. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we see this is only the beginning. We have put in this form to request private or public peering with us, but we want to continue doing things like this. Uh, we like automation quite a bit. So the next thing we're doing is coming to your browsers very soon is a, a similar form to request participation in the caching program that we have. Currently, we receive requests by email to a different email account. That's fna.fb.com. And we're going to follow the same process we did with public peering and private peering requests. We're going to move these to the same uh, website, the facebook.com slash peering. There will just be another button where you can request participation in the program. Just if you didn't get it, that's the, that's the link. And now we're open for questions. Eh, alguna pregunta, tenemos espacio para un par de preguntas eh, para nuestros ponentes. Eh, por ahí creo que viene Dubla, Dubla Fisher. Sí. Preguntas en castellano, portugués, inglés, las que quieran. Uh, hola, yo iba a hacer la pregunta en castellano, pero Tomás no deja. Voy a hacer la pregunta en portugués. Uh, bueno, primero... Gostaria de falar, reiterar a recomendação que vocês fizeram de que todos os XPs usem o PIRINDB como base de autenticação. É, isso vale para todos. Tem, a gente tem bastante XPs aqui do LACREX e outros que estão se formando. Deveria ser quase que uma condição impositiva. É realmente muito importante. Mas a pergunta que eu faço é, vocês falaram do sistema de automatização de peering, ou seja, das sessões de BGP. E a gente sabe que tem uma outra dificuldade, que são é a cama, preparar a camada física, preparar a camada 2 e 3, a rede de enlace. Quando a gente fala de sessão BGP sobre um, uma rede multilateral, um MPLA, é, a, isso está tudo pronto, mas se você tem PNIs, a camada física tem que estar preparada. Como essas duas coisas se alinham é, no, no teu fluxo e complementarmente sobre esse sistema de automatização a, o Facebook contribui com diversos códigos abertos alguma parte desse sistema de automatização estaria por exemplo disponível para que outras empresas pudessem adotar obrigado obrigado é, eu vou responder em espanhol e inglês porque meu eu entendi perfeitamente mas meu português é um pouco raro não sei se a gente Sabe, mas, um, uh, let me say that, yes, this is, this is correct. The, 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 when there is a PNI to be established, then you have a physical part of it. Uh, right now, the automation, what it's doing is putting the request into our um, queue to be reviewed and approved. And when it's approved, it just kicks off the same provisioning process that it would do for anything else. Internally creates a ticket for our provisioning team. Uh, actually, the PNI request also asks depending on the situation, but it may ask that you provide the LOA uh, for us and fill in the demarcation info, like all the, all the, everything that's like a copy paste, it's tried to be taken care of by the form and just uh, fire the, the ticket or internal provisioning system that will be a human requesting a, a cross-connect somewhere, yeah. I mean, if, if all the um, data center providers had uh, a website or an API that would receive cross-connect requests, automatically that that would be great right but uh yeah we're not quite there yet and then the other question that one is for jenny it's about that's okay yeah and the other question was about if anything was open uh any other code is open to be shared it's, uh... yeah so that's a great question um unfortunately none of the code is open source there's a lot of open source tools since it's um, a lot of it relies on our sort of custom infrastructure but there's a lot of open source tools that can do the same thing and the programmatic API that we are working on will be open source once it's been developed. Uh, Thomas Lynch, 
Eh, para la última pregunta. Gracias. My question is, you present the system that is for us to request to you peering. How do you request peers or you do not request peering? That's a great question. Um, yeah, it, it's uh, the volume of our requests going out is smaller than the amount of requests we had to, to receive. Uh, we do have some things automated, like for example, when we um, are connected at NIX, we do have a feature that we call it top up which is run a, a command and it will automatically send an email to every member that, imagine we have usually like two routers connected to the IEX and only one has a session and the other one is not configured. So that automatically detects those cases, sends an email to, um, to everyone that's not have the, the second session configured and tells them like, hey, this is the information I have configured. It will also push the configuration on our side and email the partner. So that's a pretty nice feature. But other than that, like PNI requests, uh, we usually send manually, but we do have some tools internally uh, for PNIs that we already have. Uh, it's easy for us to trigger a request for a, for an upgrade. It will also kick off like an email template and say like, hey, you were at capacity, you would like to add some more. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Bueno, eh, vamos a tener una última pregunta. Esta, esta dama ha venido a hacer una, a hacer una pregunta, así que la última. Buenos días, Giovanna Castro de Columbus Networks. ¿Existe alguna herramienta eh, que pueda ser utilizada por los peers para identificar el flujo de tráfico desde Facebook hacia la red, de, hacia la red particular de cada peer? O sea, la, la, la pregunta es si en lugar de, de querer pedir el peering, tú quieres ver el tráfico. No. no. Nosotros tenemos peer en diferentes puntos de nuestra red, en diferentes países. Y me gustaría saber si hay alguna manera de poder identificar por dónde está el tráfico de downstream, por dónde está fluyendo hacia nuestra red. Eh, es más cuando tenemos problemas para no. tratar de identificar los enlaces. Ok. Um, I will answer the question. Can I answer in English? ¿Puedo responderte en inglés? Así también entiende Jenny. Es ok. Eh, bueno, ella entiende bastante bien español. Sí. <laughs> I got, um, okay, I'll answer in English. So if you already have sessions configured or PNI established, if, and you come here, you will see the amount of traffic uh, per edge location, let's say, right? And if in certain cases, if you have access to the network partner portal, that everyone that has a cache has access, and some of the partners that have PNI have access to, you can see a lot of information that is not within the scope of this presentation, but we share performance uh, information about the egress points. There's a map with a lot of data, uh, but that's all behind the network partner portal. And the next thing we're gonna be adding next next year or the end of this year is trace route information from, from all the locations where we see the, the prefixes. But that's only if you have login to the portal. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Bueno, pues con estas preguntas cerramos este bloque de presentaciones. Eh, un aplauso para nuestros presentadores. Thank you.